Hi and welcome to this video about the difference between reserved and committed memory. So when we're looking at a process address space that has some kind of size based on whether the process is a 32-bit or 64-bit running on this or that operating system, what does the address space actually contain? So first we have the executable which is being mapped there by the kernel, same goes for NTDLL which is known as the loader and also the one that provides support for native APIs and essentially system calls that allow us to do things in Windows. And then there'll be other DLLs we'll be using, such as kernel base, advanced API 32, and so on. There are also stacks for threads that are part of the process, and there's one thread definitely that was created by the kernel when the process was just created, so it has its own stack. And there's also the D4 process heap, the purpose of the heap is to manage small memory allocations, or allocations which are not on page boundaries, not chunks of 4 kilobytes necessarily. There could be other heaps, by the way. The default process heap is always there, but other heaps could be created. If we have more threads, then more stacks would be there as well. And then we also have just generic allocated memory by using the virtual alloc function that we don't know exactly what the purpose of that memory is. It depends on what the developer was trying to do. There's also the process environment block and all the thread environment block data structures for each thread in the process. So essentially, we have this address space that is filled with all this stuff. And of course, uh, naturally, in most cases, the address space is not nearly as full as it seems in this uh, diagram. This is just for demonstration purposes, of course. But that's the basic idea stuff that is in a process address space. And when we're thinking about memory, about the pages within the address space, pages are 4 kilobytes in size normally. So there are three st states for these kinds of pages. The first state is free, meaning there's nothing there. In fact, when the process is just created and when the executable and NTDLL is mapped into the process address space, obviously most of the address space has nothing in it. All these pages are free, there's just nothing there, which means that if you try to access any of those addresses, you'll get an access violation exception, which by default will crash the process. The opposite of free is committed. Committed means allocated, something that can be used and there's no way in hell this could go away uh, at some point. A simple example would be calling a function such as malloc. Malloc is a high level function from the C runtime and it always commits memory. So if malloc returns an address which is not null, it means that memory is ours, we can use it. There's no way this memory can go anywhere really. The only thing that could happen is that the memory could be paged out, for example. But when you make the access, a page fault would occur because the processor will not be able to translate the virtual to physical pages correctly and that would be caught by the memory manager which will bring the page back to RAM, fix the page tables and tell the processor please try again. This is all completely transparent to us accessing that memory. We got back, back a pointer, we can just access it, there's no way it's going to go away. That's the meaning of committed. The system is committed to give, that, to give us that memory whenever we need it. So that's what we typically think of as allocated memory, memory you also pay for, which means that thing is limited. There's a limit to how much memory we can commit in a system. And we'll see that very soon in Task Manager. Now there's a third page state called reserved, which is somewhere in between committed and free. From a CPU perspective, it's the same as free, meaning there's really nothing there. When the CPU tries to translate the virtual addresses to physical, it will fail, raise a page fault exception. However, the idea here is that new allocations that are going to be targeting the memory manager saying, hey, memory manager, give me a piece of memory, will not happen within that reserved region. It's just a contiguous address space which is reserved for a particular purpose. And if you want to use some of that, we'll have to explicitly use addresses within that range. A classic example is a thread stack. When a thread is created in, in user mode, we get a stack. Now, let's say we want a stack of one megabyte in size as the maximum. So one way of dealing with that is just allocating that one megabyte upfront and using it. So that could work definitely, but might be wasteful because maybe the thread doesn't really need and won't perhaps need that much memory. So we have an initial committed size and then the memory can grow gradually if needed and up until that limit, which is the reserved size limit. And so we don't waste memory, we don't waste real memory, that is committed memory, up front, but only if we actually have to. 
but reservation is necessary here because the memory has to be contiguous. So let's see the difference between committed and reserved in a slightly different way, using code, which is the, the way I like it. So let's say I want to create an application that is similar to Microsoft Excel. We have like a big matrix of uh, data. We'd like to allow the user to work with that kind of matrix and enter data in any cell the user might see uh, fit. So let's just take an example to work with some values which are easy to, uh, to reason about. So let's say we want to have 1024 uh, cells in the X direction, that is uh, columns, and we want to have the same number of rows, say. And then let's assume that the cell size is also one kilobyte. So essentially we're giving the user, we'd like to give the user the ability to work with a bit more than a million cells. Each cell can contain one kilobyte of data. And I also want to make this management of this big range of cells as easy as possible. So a simple way of doing that is doing something like this. Maybe I just can call malloc here and allocate x size times uh, y size times cell size uh, to get the size that I need to manage here. And if that works, then of course I can access any given cell. Let's say we have some kind of x here and y here that could be coming from anywhere, some input or whatever. We can calculate the actual address or particular cell fairly easily if we take the original pointer, assuming of course that is a successful, and then we can add x and add y and uh, multiply that by x size, then multiply that by cell size, something like this. Of course we'll have to fix that a little bit because we need to have a byte pointer here so calculations can be made. You can't make calculations with a void pointer. So that would be a very easy way to manage that kind of memory by having this sort of calculation available to us at any given point in time. That's where, why we're using this kind of scheme. However, what we're doing here is actually very wasteful because we're allocating these million something cells, but it is unlikely the user will actually need the entire million cells. But let's see what that looks like and let's see if we can make that a bit uh, better. So first I'm not going to use malloc, really I'm going to use a lower level function called virtual alloc, which is closest to the memory manager from user mode perspective and has certain powers that malloc just doesn't have. I won't be covering uh, what malloc is actually doing, but uh, in a one sentence actually using the heap API, just managing these uh, small memory chunks which are always committed. So virtual alloc can do more than that. So the first parameter is the address I'd like to get back. In this case, I don't care. I'm just saying to the memory manager, please find me a good address that would fit. And then we can provide the size, which is going to be the same as this calculation. And then I'm going to specify that I'd like the memory to be committed and reserved. So in fact, technically we have to commit, when we want to commit, we have to reserve that first. We can do, we can do both of them at the same time. And even though you can use memcommit only, that would also work. It actually works because of a, a kind of funny uh, bug that Microsoft cannot really fix anymore. Uh, probably will never be fixed. So the, the thing is that in all versions of Windows, using memcommit only worked and it functioned just like memcommit and reserve. So Microsoft realized that's actually a bug, but then they couldn't really fix it because if they fixed it and would demand using both of these when a new chunk is being committed, it will uh, break existing code that might have taken dependency on this specific bug. So this will never actually probably going to be fixed. So uh, I'm going to use the right constants here, but just know that using memcommit only in this particular case would work. And then we need to provide some protection. Let's use read write here uh, for demonstration purposes. So let's uh, try it out, see what that looks like. In this case, we're talking about one gigabyte of memory. Let me put a breakpoint here. I'm going to press F5 to run this and open Task Manager. So with Task Manager, here's what happens. We can see here that currently I have 56 gigabytes of committed memory. This is what we see here. And after the slash, that's the commit limit. In this case, that's 143 gigabytes on my system, which is exactly the sum of the RAM that I have, which is 128 gigabytes, and the current size of the page files. So this is what we have here. Notice here at the top, we can see the actual in use in terms of physical memory. So I'm using 45.9 gigabytes of RAM, but the committed memory is larger, which means that some parts of committed memory might not be currently in RAM, which is of course perfectly fine. But this is what the uh, counters here show us. That's the limit I can get to. 
So what happens when I press F10 now to move over this line? We'll see that the committed size jumps to 57 immediately. Notice the RAM is not really budging because we haven't yet touched the memory. But there's a commitment here. So now the system is committed to give me that one gigabyte whenever I need it. There's no way that would go away. And so we waste one gigabyte up front. And if I was close to my limit, that might even fail. So for example, let's say I want to have even more cells to the user, available to the user, like this uh, 10,000 something here. So now the calculation is going to bring me to 10 gigabytes. I do have to do a little uh, fix here to change that to a 64-bit value. So the calculation is not truncated to 32-bit. But now we should see 10 gigabytes going out up front if my system can handle it. In this case, it can. So we expect 56 to jump to 66 immediately. Let's see. And indeed, this is what happens. Again, RAM is not being used right now because I haven't touched those pages just yet. So we see that committed memory jump up, which means there's less memory available to the rest of the system, which of course is not ideal because it is unlikely the user will use the entire set of these 10 million cells that I'm providing for that user. And if I try to go even further than that, maybe get to 100 gigabytes of memory, would that work? And the answer is maybe. Maybe that would work, but I'm going to definitely stretch my system here to its, li to the, its limits because you can see there is no 100 gigabytes available here and maybe my page file can grow to accommodate that big chunk of memory. Let's see, in fact, it fails. You can see, well, it actually succeeded. You can see that uh, the page file has been uh, extended to allow more memory. Now I'm very close to the limit, so other processes are going to be pretty uh, painful for them to allocate memory successfully and until something uh, changes where I'm perhaps going to free memory. But obviously now I'm very close to the limit and those two gigabytes that remain have to make do for other processes if they're now trying to allocate or commit memory. So obviously this is not ideal. And if I go even further than that, if, if I want to get something like one terabyte uh, of uh, address space, obviously that will fail. There's no way to, to do that. We can see the pointers returned as null. And if I look at the last arrow, you can see it says commitment limit. It's just the page file is too small, so I can't really uh, extend the page file any further. I don't have enough disk space for that kind of operation. So obviously that's not going to work out. Now, what happens when we try to reserve memory? But let's stay with the commitment just uh, a few more seconds here. Let's see if we can go back to 10 gigabytes to make it something manageable. If I want to access the memory right now and do something with it, we can. So let's say I want to have some text here. Let's call that hello, um, I don't know, memory. And I'd like to copy that to the actual buffer I allocated, maybe in the first cell, just for simplicity. I can use something like string copy here and copy that into buffer. The source is text, but also since this is the save function, I need to specify the actual length I want to copy. So let's do that. And so here's the source that's going to be text. That's going to be good enough, although uh, we do have some complaint from the compiler. Let me just then change that to, to character pointer to make the compiler uh, more happy. It's the same thing, really. So if I go ahead and try this out, let's see what happens. So the first thing I'm doing is committing 10 gigabytes of memory. You can see that uh, the memory has been uh, committed here. Uh, that's what we expect. Let's just make sure that we had the previous value here correctly. You can see it's 54. Now I'm going to press F10 or well, 55 turns into 65. And if I go to debug windows and get one of the memory windows to see what's going on, we can now put the buffer value here we can see the memory is actually zeroed out. And that's actually a rule. Whenever you use virtual alloc to commit memory, the memory is always zeroed out. If you zero it out yourself later on, you're essentially wasting time. So now we can see it's all zeroed out. I'm going to perform the string copy here by pressing F10 here. You can see the memory has been changed. You can see that in red, hello memory is there. Everything is just fine. So here's the thing. In order to make this more efficient, I would like to instead of commit, just reserve the memory. Reserve the memory means that I'm reserving the address chunk of these 10 gigabytes. So in fact, I can grow that almost to any number. And, and what we have there is a bunch of pages which are just not there. 
but the region is still reserved. Behind the scenes, it's actually an entry in something called the virtual address descriptors, which are added to the process descriptors that indicate that this particular area is reserved for some future purpose. So new allocations in the process will not meddle with that address range. So let's see what happens right now. So if I go ahead and make this allocation, which is actually just reserving memory, let's see what happens. You might notice that from the committed memory standpoint, nothing has changed, nothing. There's no 10 gigabytes here or anything like that. And if I go here and again type buffer here because the address is different, you can see these question marks. Question marks means that mean really that there's nothing there. There's nothing there, it's no, not really memory, which means that if I try to access it like this string copy call, I would get an exception. And I get an exception of access violation with this value that many of you perhaps are familiar with, C000 many zeros and five. Essentially saying there's no way to do that, there is no memory there. And so the idea here is that I can do things in, in stages. If the user really wants to access the first page, I can go ahead and just commit that page. So I can do virtual alloc here again, but this time I'm going to select the first page explicitly. I'm going to select the, the, the address explicitly, not specify null there. The size is cell size, but it's always going to be rounded up to the next page boundary because everything is happening in pages and I have a typo here. And then, of course, we're going to commit only the areas already reserved and we're going to stick with read write here uh, because we want to be able to, to make changes. So if I press a five now and try this again, let's see what happens. So the first thing I do, I reserve a big chunk of memory, but it's just a range. So we don't get any change in task manager and we, but we'll get a pointer and we can see there are question marks there as we expect. But now let's see what happens when I commit this first cell. Once I do that, you notice it changes immediately to zeros because now it is committed which means we can write or read to this memory without any issues because now we commit four kilobytes out of the 10 gigabyte range. And that's the basic idea here. We only need to commit the actual cells the user is accessing, which is much more efficient than committing everything up front. In fact, I can go ahead and change here to 100 gigabytes without any problems. In fact, let's go with one terabyte. Why not? Let's just reserve one terabyte of address space. Can we do that? And the answer is definitely yes. Notice we do get a pointer here, which is valid. And you can see that the RAM and sorry, and the committed memory hasn't budged because we really didn't allocate anything. We just reserved a range to be used later on. And then of course we can uh, just commit the appropriate page that we need and make the access. If we actually look at buffer here, we'll see that it works just as before. So we should see the string copy here showing us the memory just like before, that's the beginning of that block. And so we can use one terabyte, it can even go to say 10 terabytes, that's not really a problem. That's not the problem because the address space is 120 terabytes in size, that's a 64-bit process address space in current Windows, Windows 8.1 and later. So that's not a problem, I do get some pointer, but you can see that I'm not really wasting anything, I'm just wasting for kilobytes when I'm actually committing that single cell. And of course it is completely invisible in task manager. So the way to access memory is to first commit it. That's definitely one way to go about it, but it's not the most efficient way because if you access the same cell again and call virtual alloc again on that cell, that works. But in fact, you're wasting time because you're going over, all over to the kernel. The kernel says, well, you've already committed that actually, so I'm not going to do anything, but you're wasting wasted the user kernel transition. So you can do a little bit better than that. So the way, we, the way we could do better is by handling an exception, by using structured exception handling. So I can do something like this. Let me put the text here and uh, use the string copy here within try accept block. And the basic idea is that if that page or that cell happens to be already committed, it will simply work. If not, we'll get an exception. And if we get an exception, we can fix that by committing that page. So I'm going to have a filter function here. I'm going to call a function I'm going to write uh, in a moment called fix memory. I'm going to pass the address of the cell in question. This is I'm working with the first cell for simplicity. The, uh, the other thing that I need is just the exception code. So I'm going to grab that because if we have some other exception which I don't know how to handle, I don't want to handle that. So SEH of course is beyond the scope of this video, maybe I'll do a video on that uh, at some other uh, point in time, but here's how 
fixed memory would look like. So here's fixed memory. I need to get some pointer that I need to fix. Let's call that P. And we'll also get the exception code here. So the first thing we want to make sure that, that if the exception code is not exception access violation, it means I have no idea what to do with that. Let someone else try to figure it out. So you can do exception continue search, which is one of the values you can return saying, please continue searching up the call stack for some handler. I have no idea what to do with that. In this case, of course, we'll only get access violation because our code within the try block here is, is very simple. Otherwise, we have to make the fix. So we're going to call virtual alloc here, just like before, but this time we're going to be more generic by passing the pointer P, whatever that P may be. The size is cell size. We want to commit the memory. And we have page read write here to maintain read write access. And then we have to return this particular value called exception continue execution. Taking the processor, we fixed it. Please try again. It's one of those special values you can return here. So let's see what happens now. Let's see what that would look like. We're now, well, we have some compilation errors. Let's see what we have here. So we have some problem with these uh, X and Y here uh, because, because we're missing parentheses here. So that's my bad. Let's try it now. Pressing F5. Task manager is not really that interesting at this point, but let's uh, work that anyway. So we have here our buffer. Let's look at that. Of course, we don't see anything because it's all just reserved memory. Then let me just put a breakpoint here within fixed memory to see what happens. We're going to continue and doing string copy. And obviously string copy again has to fail. We get an access violation. And we can see the debugger is stopping us and say access violation. Now you might be wondering why is it stopping us? I mean, we have some kind of handling in place. In fact, we can press F5 to continue and we'll be handling our exception here. However, normally access violation is, is considered a very, very powerful, I would say, very nasty exception that you shouldn't really disregard. So that's why we has the, have these options in debugger says break when this exception type is thrown. This is sometimes referred to as break on first chance exception. And uh, we can leave that as is and just press F5, but you can also uncheck that so that next time this happens, it will first give a chance to the application to handle that exception. If it's not handled, then it will break on second chance saying, well, it wasn't handled, the process is about to shut down, it's about to terminate, but you can still see what's going on perhaps at this, at this point in time. So let's just press F5 and see what happens. You can see we'll land in fixed memory with our pointer here and the code for C0005 as we expect. So obviously this is the correct code that we know how to handle, but notice what happens now in the memory window. It changes to zeros immediately because it is now committed. And now it's going to return to the string copy code. It's not really the string copy, it's the actual machine, machine instruction that caused the exception. We can even have some uh, breakpoint here. We can press F5 and we'll land here and hello memory will be written correctly. The next time this code will run, let's say this is a, a normal application, a real application, the next time it runs where one of these cells already committed, there will be no exception. Not just this particular cell, it's actually a few adjacent cells because the page is four kilobytes in size. So once we allocated or committed the first cell, it's actually committed four cells because every cell we, de we decided it's going to be one kilobyte in size. So four of those are actually a single page. So this is reserved memory being having these punctuating holes with committed memory every time we need it. But we can have gigantic address spaces in this case being managed very efficiently without losing any memory for data or for memory we don't really need. And that's, I think, the nice thing about reserved memory, keeping the memory contagious. That's the point, really. We want the memory to be kept contagious because then calculating particular position for a particular cell is super easy and super fast. So I hope that makes some sense. Feel free to run this application yourself and play with it and see what that looks like in practice yourself.